Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Topic UFO. Tonight, we're going to be speaking with some folks down under, uh, Miss Lorraine Cilia and Dominic McNamara. And they come to us from the, <clears throat> excuse me, the UFO and Paranormal Research Society of Australia. Um, I believe they're located down uh, near Sydney, and we'll, we'll get that verified when we talk to them. Uh, but this organization, uh, strangely enough, has a story behind it on how it even got started. And we'll be talking to them about that as well. Uh, they have all sorts of things that they do. Um, they're, like I said, they're uh, involved in not only UFO, but paranormal research as well. So uh, I think without further ado here, we won't waste any time and we'll just invite them on here. Uh, Lorraine, Dominic, are you there? Yes, we're here. Yep. Great. Well, welcome to Topic UFO. Thanks so much for uh, joining us tonight. Thank you for having us, Rick. You're welcome. What's, uh, where are you located? Uh, are you in Sydney or outside of Sydney? or? Uh, actually, we're in the southwest. So, I don't know, what is it, about 65 kilometers the way the crow flies from the Sydney GPO. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't consider us as being in Sydney, if you know what I mean. Oh, okay. We're in a place, in a place called Campbelltown, which is like uh, another satellite place uh, around the outside. It's like being in San Francisco, but you actually live in Foster City or something. Gotcha. It's X distance outside of it. Well, listen, um, you, you both, I guess, uh, run this, this uh, UFO and Paranormal Research Society. Uh, Lorraine, you are the president. Dominic, you are the secretary. Uh, it was yeah. established back in the year 2000. What, uh, why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about what this uh, uh, society does? Okay, um, well, we were established back in the year 2000, um, originally as Western Sydney UFO Society, and um, specifically for the investigation of aerial phenomena. But in 2006, we realized that the UFO topic goes into the paranormal, and we decided to cover a, um, a more overall various aspects of the paranormal? Uh, yeah, essentially the word paranormal is a made-up term for anything extraneous to so-called normality, so technically I suppose the UFO phenomenon such as it is comes under that banner, but I guess the problem is the way the public sees it is you're either looking at the UFO phenomenon or you're on a ghost hunt. They see the term paranormal as to do with beyond the veil and so on well and you are things in the sky but there's lots more we, there's everything from cryptozoology to, to some of the most bizarre happenings we're actually interested in all of it yeah you're not the uh, first person to to tell me that those two things go together the paranormal and the ufo uh i think it does confuse people from time to time but i, I definitely understand where you're coming from uh now, would you say that the majority of your time is spent uh, on one side of the other, or is it pretty much a 50-50 split between uh, UFO <laughs> and paranormal? We like to think that we're a 50-50 split, but at the moment, uh, the focus is on UFOs because there's so much going on within the UFO community at the moment. So, um, you do a lot more networking with with people who have a UFO group, as opposed to uh, the you know the Joe Bob's Paranormal Research Society, I'm glad that there are plenty of people who, um, I guess, focus rather than try to be sort of jack of all. Whereas our website is being reconstructed, so the idea is to have a greater reference point for more topics, sort of A to Z as a stopping point for information about them all. But on the other hand, we were involved in um, 
a TV series called right. Paranormal Investigators. Um, we were entering um, haunted locations and investigating, capturing on film. And we actually did 18 episodes. Wow. We've also... Yeah, yeah they, they went to air on community TVS here in Sydney. Then they went to community TV stations right around the country. Um, because it's one of those kind of reality style things, you get what you get on the night. But by the same token, we were looking at the history of various places around Australia that people might not get to see. You know what it's like. You, if you're on the East Coast in uh, the United States, there are some people who have no idea about California or whatever. But if there's still only one country, just because it's so-called easier to travel doesn't mean to say you get around to all the spots. Oh, yeah. And the show was really good like that. And then when that finished, we determined that you could write a, a compilation of reports in, what is it now, nearly 13 years yeah. of the Society of Bingo. Mm. On top of that, um, there's what each one of us has historically. So I didn't, my, my involvement didn't start the day that I start joining this community here. When I was in the state of South Australia in Adelaide, the city over there, I was with a group where we had a major project and that project was to dig through the National Archives. So there's, you know, 50 odd years worth of cases where you could pick out a standout and say, well, look, let's not just write about it, we'll recreate it. So what did we do? Yeah. We oh, we well, started recreating cases and we've actually put them on DVD. We've got actors, cast them, directed, shot, filmed. It's a, it's a no budget circumstance, but it's, it's in trying to uh, personify the paper, so to speak. Wow, well, that, think, that's quite an accomplishment to, to be able to recreate that with actors and everything else. Aha, there you go. I, I see, I see. <laughs> so, People would be more likely to um, watch a DVD nowadays than pick up a book and read it, unfortunately. This is yeah, true. I, I guess the other aspect is that sometimes um, you might have one person in a household who's really interested in it, mm. and everybody else is not much more than tangentially interested. So you get one person who would actually go out of their way to find this new book you've just written, but nobody else will read it. Whereas if it's playing on the screen, even if no one else says that they're into this stuff, if they sit down and watch a story just to poke holes in the acting and the directing. <laughs> hey, there's nothing the there's nothing better than a B movie, I'll tell you anyway, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. And we've had quite a response to that kind of thing. And that went to air on PBS uh, Community TV here as well. We're, we're currently shooting more se uh, episodes now. Well, it just sounds like you've just got your fingers in a lot of different things. Uh, let me ask you, uh, now, I, I know that there was a, a particular case that uh, got this whole thing rolling, I believe, uh, and that was the, the Laszlo Novak case. Is, is that correct? That's yep. correct. So, um, tell, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, because if the viewers aren't aware of, of this, uh, Laszlo Novak is, is a person uh, down in the Sydney area that had, uh, I guess, an experience. So uh, tell us about that, Celia. Okay. Well, what happened was um, Laszlo Novak lives in a high area of Campbelltown, Eagle Vale Drive, so they will tell you how high he is. He has a 360 degree view. But this particular day, he was seeing visitors out of his home and he happened to look up and see um, three lights flying in formation, a perfect triangle. He ran inside, he got his camera and he managed to capture these objects. This was on the 5th of June in 1999 and his, the, all his guests witnessed it, so it was a multiple witness case. It, um, he, the media became involved. It was actually shown on Channel 7 News. 
So this was kind of a big deal back in 99. And uh, they, they couldn't explain what they were. They, they were scrutinized and accepted as UFOs, unidentified flying objects. That's the one that went to the newsreel. That's that, the one it? that went yeah. to the newsreel. I, I remember that because I think there were some other people. Was there, were there other yeah. people in the same neighborhood? Yep. So what happened was later that night, the objects came back. He was watching the skies. Which you now. do. <laughs> so later on, they came back. And uh, one of them came really close so he could actually see the shape of the object. It was round like a donut with a black center. It was orange in color. He had his camera. He was running along the street, capturing this object on his camera. Um, he got to the corner, and another family who lived in the street came around the corner in the car. And they're, they're a, um, a Muslim family, so it's highly unusual to have a Muslim family corroborate the sighting. But they actually saw the same thing. Actually, the first thing they did, almost instinctively, when you see a guy in the middle of the night with a black device shoulder mounted running up the middle of the street, was they avoided him as much as they possibly could and drove off. <laughs> but then I, the guy behind the wheel, um, the father of the family, he saw that up and he said, wait a minute, that's a, that was a camera. And of course, then they started looking for what he was looking for. And because of the crescent, the street that they, they didn't actually know each other prior to this so that didn't help so he drove right the way around and came back again and then they all stood there and saw this thing so now uh, how now how did this lead in though to to the organization that you have now well because it was covered by the media it was um it was uh, in, in the local newspaper as well and um there was two gentlemen in the Astronomers Society here, Attila Caldi and Philip Ainsworth, and they were interested in Laszlo's sighting. And they decided to get uh, people together from the local area to see if anybody else had had these sightings. And um, I read it in the local paper, I'd been having sightings, and I went along to the first meeting. And as a founder member, it became an ongoing meeting, everybody meeting once a month. They would have been, we had a tiny little room yeah. in the, the local library that seats probably 30 people, and there would have been at least 60 people crammed into this little room. People who had had sightings in the area had a story to tell, and all because of Laszlo's sighting. So Laszlo is the founder, of the Western Sydney um, UFO Society, along with the Tiller and Phillip, yeah, and uh, um, not, none of them are associated with now, the organisation now. Do, does does Laszlo uh, attend the meetings still? Um, yeah. Occasionally, he's coming to this one. He's coming along yeah. to see Mary Rodwell. Oh, okay. Um, and because eventually he he did go under hypnosis. This um. There was an hour missing on his tape. Yeah, that's true. Um, the families that saw the objects with him became totally obsessed. Laszlo became totally obsessed. Mm. It, it it affected them. Well, I tell, is, I, I was just gonna, I was just going to tell you, um, I I met Laszlo uh, via Facebook actually, and we got to talking, and we linked up on on Skype and started talking and he wanted to show me how he uh, captured the video so here's this guy he's not a young guy he's not an old guy but he's not a young guy and he's walking around his front yard with this wireless laptop with a camera on it he climbs the ladder up his roof with this laptop in hand, all the way up on top of the roof, and he's showing me how he catches these videos. And it's just amazing, uh, really amazing. And from, uh, from what I've seen, he's continuing to capture strange things in the air, is he not? 
Yes. He is. That's true. He has a YouTube channel, Color UFO, and it's 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 global, obviously. He has thousands of um, viewers, hundreds of subscribers. He's captured over 200 videos, and mostly now he captures daylight. That's what I was going to say. Most of what he's doing at the moment is uh, uh, going back a little way. A few people shoved an IR filter on a daylight camera, right? Uh, essentially trying to block out everything except the IR. And under those conditions, on a bright day, you can see the brightest stars in the sky. You can see the occasional satellite people with satellite tracking and stuff like this. And whilst they were doing it, they were getting these other weird floating things that didn't move in straight lines or anything like that. And basically they were exhausting the possibilities of these were birds, that was something else, but I don't know what this is. And Laszlo basically fell onto that and started doing night and day stuff dependent upon what takes his whim, I suppose. And yeah, you know, it's like it could take hours and hours all day just to find something that's not even doesn't turn out to be something spectacular. But uh, for I, then he's to get two fifty, he's been doing that a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, from what I've seen lately, is he is capturing these white orbs that yep. kind of float near the clouds, and then they might they might move up at an angle or down. Have you seen these? And do you know anything about them? Uh, they're obviously under intelligent control because a lot of his footage shows them um, flying in formation. Um, there, there's uh, quite a lot of trios and a lot of our sighting reports are trios of lights. When he first captures a trio, it looks like it might be attached to some kind of circular disc and then you see them just take off and uh, fly away in, in all directions. But sometimes they fly, up, fly off in a triangular formation. So I don't know. We, uh, is, there, is there something to do with the IR filter uh, capturing things that we can't see with the naked eye because you can't see them? with a, just his, his normal camera, what he does is he, he's up on his roof, he's got a good 360 degree view, so he's got a camera with an IR filter connected and he's got a camera without the filter, so he's showing um, the blue sky and the, through the IR filter it's kind of green and white. You can see birds fly past, you can yeah. see aircraft, but the IR filter uh, picks up these white orbs which are flying in our atmosphere. We don't know what they are, but he's not the only one to be picking them up. Well, that's Actually, what I, we, I was going to ask you. Are there others uh, that are seeing these things down there? Oh, um, yeah, we tried it out. With, <laughs> we, we tried it ourselves. I said, okay, look, let, let's not get something for the equipment we've got. We matched the exact same equipment. Just to look at the uh, 940 or 850, like near or far IR filtering, to try and replicate the circumstances. And I could see the occasional satellite. I could see the brightest star in the sky at that time. And I could see some of this other stuff. And as we said, occasionally, quite clearly make out birds with, with an IR at, at extremely, what, what for a dream creature at a high altitude. Uh, but you couldn't see it very well either with the unaided eye or with an optical device of any other kind because it was picking up a sun reflection spot so brightly that you could see it with the IR as a dot. But every now and then you could see the wing flap or whatever. But some of these other things, I, I, I figured I'd explain it away in a week or uh, a month by talking to a few people from laboratories, etc. And here we are, I don't know what, a year later? And... <laughs> Some of them are still in the too hard to do pile. So I'm very inquisitive. I want to know what they are. And he's not the only one who's been picking them up. There's uh, another gentleman who's made his mark in the UFO field over here at the moment, Damien Knott. And he has a channel, Night of Truth, K N I G H T, 
Knight of Truth 79. And he's been um, um, getting global interest from his footage. And a lot of his footage, he's capturing orbs through the day as well. Now you can get the um, night vision with the IR filters you can use through the day. That's and, true. They're rather like the yeah. explosion of the Handycam. Um, suddenly there were, you know, five million videos. And generally, I find the things that I look at, there's like kind of like a 90% rate. It's the last 10% that you can't either easily explain, push, push an explanation, like a skeptic would. Yeah, yeah. Now, I have no idea what it is. And there's a recently another gentleman in Darlington, um, Perth, in Western Australia, and he's come out and told the media, and they've scrutinized his footage as well. He's got hundreds of photographs, daytime shots of objects floating around or flying around in our skies. So it's just another way of capturing what's going on out there. Well, I tell you, uh, I speak to people all over the world and it sure seems like uh, the amount of activity uh, going on lately is just skyrocketing. It is. It's phenomenal. That's true. I don't we know have... whether it's because more people are looking for them, or if they're, you know, if truly more activity. But it seems like more is being reported. Uh, Celia, <laughs> let let me ask you: Did, did you have a uh, some type of experience yourself? Yeah. The most recent thing we will have to some degree, but the most recent thing. Um, this is really strange because we. We meet at the art center in Campbelltown, and after it's over, a few of the committee that ran the meeting, which was myself, Lorraine, Kelly, uh, Darren, Mike and Mark, and then there was uh, Mike and Mark, who are a couple of members. We were standing around having a chat in the car park, and being a car park with a public facility, there's a street lamp here and a street lamp there and so on, but then it, it, it's well lit enough for safety, but there are gaps in between, including trees. And the guys were standing around having a chat on one side of the tree, and I'm standing over next to my car, back of my car, near uh, one of the street lamps. One of the reasons even we don't, you know, talk and stare at the sky at the same time, but one of the reasons you might look up is you notice something unusual out of the ordinary. What I mean by that is out of ordinary things, a commercial airliner traveling south to southwest, then a light aircraft traveling north to south and then turning. They give this optical illusion occasionally. You think, ah, these, these guys are going to cross, but you know it's not true. One's flying further away from you at higher altitude and they almost subtend the same angle, so you know they're miles apart from each other. But it's just one of those curious things, and a bird flies past. All the things that you would normally see, then what happened? Well, as we were watching the aircraft, and we would not have seen it unless we were watching the aircraft, um, Darren said, what's that? And we all look up, and there's this massive triangular shaped object uh yeah actually we can give you a diagram later oh, but it, it's delta oh you have you already have you seen it it's a kind of delta shape oh so in other words that's the picture of that yes i saw yeah. it concave the rear of it that's what it looked like and, and like a, a biplane apparatus across in, the front across the front the, of it i didn't see the front the the, the, the explanation is that if you have the nose area that there appeared to be some equipment hanging either side right top and bottom uh, rather like biplane wings wings would be on really the strange it was close enough to be able to see um like round nobules around the outside of it which we think that's probably the lights but it didn't have its lights on. It and was totally black, yes. totally silent, 
and just moved across the sky, blocking the stars as it moved across. That's how you could see it. So, That's so no, no possibility that this could be one of the drones that they always talk about, the military drones. No chance of, of that. It, but I mean, it a, so it didn't unusual. make any sounds. B, it's even a drone. It would be unusual that it would be at an altitude where it didn't reflect any. Because this is over Campbelltown. Yes, yeah, any air glow or whatever. This thing was extremely stealthy. I just caught the back edge of it when everyone was pointing because I, I didn't have the reference. I wasn't looking at the aircraft, so I didn't know where they were looking behind it after they'd gone. So they, the commercial one's gone. The light aircraft's gone. They said, "What's that following him?" And I, so I, I'm, I'm on the other side of the tree. I've got the light to my right. So I, as I look, I just catch the back end of it because the halo. Uh, mucks up your night vision, mm. so to speak, to be able to see things that are dim. So I just caught the back edge shape, but I didn't see how fast it went or, or as it disappeared. The other members did. And as far as they were concerned, it, it couldn't even have been something that was powered. You know, here you have power gliders style drone equipment. It was going too far for that. Yeah. And talking about sightings where people see something for a couple of seconds. From the first instance that the other guy started yelping <laughs> to when they last got sight of it was at least eight, ten seconds, I'd mm -hmm. say. And all that happened in between time is other people were saying, oh yeah, now I can see it. And including, I was the last one. It's just an unusual for this to be happening over residential Campbelltown. Yeah, if you didn't yeah. want people to see it's not something you do. And um, also, we had, oh goodness me, at least a half a dozen sightings, at least more. And that within was in that the, week. the week preceding and just after. And um, Laszlo actually captured uh, triangular shaped objects flying around in the daytime with his camera about three days after our sighting. It's a leap to link, link them all together, yeah. of course. Right. But, right. but all the way down the coast, yeah. the sightings came in as far down as Kayama of objects in the sky. Wow. Well, listen, uh, folks, we're getting a little uh, down here on time. We're almost out of time. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get your website out there. Uh, where people can find out more about you and your organization. Uh, okay. Can you give uh, us uh, your uh, website? Yeah, the, the website is ufosociety.net.au. Okay. You can proceed that with the three W's or not. All right. And, uh, having said that, um, one of the things that we also do is publish a bi-monthly journal. Yes. Uh, the phenomenon times so a lot of stuff goes into that subscribers in other words people can join online they can they can contact us through the email that's there and the contact details uh, but essentially ufosociety.net.au uh, but a lot of people who use Google they just put ufoprsa don't hit the return button and we bounce up to the top of the list and and then uh, these meetings that you have, I take it they're open to the public, or do you have to become a member, or what? No, no, no. no. All it all it means is that members get in for almost token amounts of money, and uh, non-members pay a little more. That's all. And they're monthly and meetings. They go onto the email list and they receive the bi-monthly magazine. Yes. And any information, any conferences. Um, just recently, we had Charles Hall yeah, that's come right. here for oh. uh, to he, us. Yes, he was on a he was on the local uh, morning show there, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're beginning to take it very seriously <laughs> here in the media, which is really good. Isn't it amazing? Uh, yeah, it is. It's quite I think, amazing. I think everyone's had a run in with the media and thought they don't know if they'd do that again. And uh, and there have been other times when they at least had a world balance presentation of what they shot with you that day um, but now you get interviews like this where no one does the tongue-in-cheek thing at all 
morning uh, and breakfast stuff was always that way, wasn't it? Yeah, always, always. It's it's so nice because it's happening over here as well. They are taking Excellent. it more seriously. Excellent. You know, they don't play the little uh, Twilight Zone music at the end of the <laughs> interview, right? Like they used to. Uh, well, listen, uh, guys, I'm so sorry, but we are definitely just out of time here. I, I wanted to say thank you so much for for coming on the show and telling us about your organization and some of this activity that's been going on down there. I'm sure we could talk for a few more hours. So we'll definitely have to have you guys back on again and uh, talk a little bit more. Nah, anytime to. you like. Thank you. All right. Well, Dominic, Lorraine, thanks again, and, and you have a good evening. Thank you, too. you Rick. You All right. Too. Good night. Good night. Open the door, you'll find the secret. To find the answer is to keep it. daylight that's what i was going to say most of what he's doing at the moment is uh, uh going back a little way a few people shoved an ir filter on a daylight camera right and uh, essentially trying to block out everything except the ir and under those conditions on a bright day you can see the brightest stars in the sky you can see the occasional satellite people with satellite tracking and stuff like this and whilst they were doing it they were getting these other weird floating things that didn't move in straight lines or anything like that. And basically they were exhausting the possibilities of these were birds, that was something else, but I don't know what this is. And Laszlo basically fell onto that and started doing night and day stuff dependent upon what takes his whim, I suppose. And yeah, you know, it's like it could take hours and hours all day just to find something that's not even doesn't turn out to be something spectacular, but, but for I, he's to get get, two fifties, been doing that a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, from what I've seen lately, is he is capturing these white orbs that yep. kind of float near the clouds, and then they'll might they might move up at an angle or down. Have you seen these? And do you know anything about them? Uh, they're obviously under intelligent control because. A lot of his footage shows them um, flying in formation. Um, there, there's quite a lot of trios, and a lot of our sighting reports are trios of lights. When he first captures a trio, it looks like it might be attached to some kind of circular disc, and then you see them just take off and uh, fly away in, in all directions. but. Sometimes they fly up, fly off in a triangular formation. So I don't know. We is there is there something to do with the IR filter uh, capturing things that we can't see with the naked eye because you can't see them with a, just his his normal camera. What he does is he he's up on his roof. He's got a good 360 degree view, so he's got. Uh, a camera with an IR filter connected and he's got a camera without the filter so he's showing um, the blue sky and the through the IR filter it's kind of green and white. You can see birds fly past, you can yeah. see aircraft but the IR filter uh, picks up these white orbs which are flying in our atmosphere we don't know what they are, but he's not the only one to be picking them up. Well, that's Actually, what we, I was going to ask you. Are there others? Uh... From the first instance that the other guy started yelping <laughs> to when they last got sight of it was at least eight, ten seconds, I'd mm -hmm. say. 
and all that happened in between time is other people saying, oh yeah, now I can see it, and including I was the last one. It's just an unusual for this to be happening over residential Campbelltown. Yeah, if you didn't yeah. want people to see it, it's not something you can do. And um, also, we had, oh goodness me, at least a half a dozen sightings, at least more. And that Within was in that the, week. the week preceding and just after. And um, Laszlo actually captured uh, triangular shaped objects flying around in the daytime with his camera about three days after our sighting. It's a leap to link, link them all together, yeah. of course. Right. But, right. but all the way down the coast, yeah. the sightings came in as far down as Kayama of objects in the sky. Wow. Well, listen, uh, folks, we're getting a little uh, down here on time. We're almost out of time, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to get your website out there uh, where people can find out more about you and your organization. Uh, okay. Can you give uh, us uh, your uh, website? Yeah, the, the website is ufosociety.net.au. Okay. You can proceed that with the three W's or not. All right. And having said that, um, one of the things that we also do is publish a bi-monthly journal. Yes. Uh, the Phenomenon Times. So a lot of stuff goes into that. Subscribers, in other words, people can join online. They can they can contact us through the email that's there and the contact details. Uh, but essentially, ufosociety.net.au. Uh, but a lot of people who use Google, they just put ufoprsa, don't hit the return button, and we bounce up to the top of the list. And and then uh, these meetings that you have, I take it they're open to the public, or do you have to no. become a member, yeah. or what? No, no, no. no. All, it, all it means is that members get in for almost token amounts of money, and... Uh, Non-members pay a little more. That's all. And their monthly and meetings. They go onto the email list and they receive the bi-monthly magazine. Yes. And any information, any conferences. Um, just recently, we had Charles Hall yeah, that's come right. here oh. for uh, to he, us. Yes, he was on a he was on the local uh, morning show there, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're beginning to take it very serious. Lamp here and a street lamp there and so on, but then it, it, it's well lit enough for safety, but there are gaps in between, including trees. And the guys are standing around having a chat on one side of the tree, and I'm standing over next to my car, back of my car, near uh, one of the street lamps. One of the reasons even we don't, you know, talk and stare at the sky at the same time. But one of the reasons you might look up is you notice something unusual out of the ordinary. What I mean by that is out of ordinary things, a commercial airliner traveling south to southwest, then a light aircraft traveling north to south and then turning. They give this optical illusion occasionally. You think, ah, these, these guys are going to cross, but you know it's not true. One's flying further away from you at higher altitude and they almost obtain the same angle, so you know they're miles apart from each other. But it's just one of those curious things, and a bird flies past. All the things that you would normally see, then what happened? Well, as we were watching the aircraft, and we would not have seen it unless we were watching the aircraft, um, Darren said, what's that? And we all look up, and there's this massive triangular shaped object uh yeah actually we can give you a diagram later oh, but it, it's delta oh you have you already have you seen it it's a kind of delta shape oh so in other words that's the picture of that yes i saw yeah. it concave the rear of it that's what it looks like and, and like a, a biplane apparatus across in, the front across the front the, of it i didn't see the front the the, the, the explanation is that if you have the nose area, that there appeared to be some equipment hanging either side, right top and bottom. Uh, rather like biplane wings, wings would be on the really car. strange. It was close enough to be able to see 
um, like round nobules around the outside of it, which we think that's probably the lights, but it didn't have its lights on. It was totally black, yes. totally silent, and just moved across the sky, blocking the stars as it moved across. That's how you could see it. So, That's so no, no possibility that this could be one of the drones that they always talk about—the military drones. No chance of, of that. It, but I mean, it a, so it didn't unusual. make any sounds. B, it's even a drone. It would be unusual that it would be at an altitude where it didn't reflect any. Because it's over Campbelltown. Yes, getting global interest from his footage. And a lot of his footage, he's capturing orbs through the day as well. Now you can get the um, night vision with the IR filters you can use through the day. That's and, true. They're rather like the yeah. explosion of the Handycam. Um, suddenly there were, you know, five million videos. And generally I find the things that I look at, there's like kind of like a 90% rate. It's the last 10% that you can't either easily explain, push, push an explanation. A lot of skeptic would. Yeah, yeah. Now, I ask you, I have no idea what it is. And there's a recently another gentleman in Darlington, um, Perth, in Western Australia, and he's come out and told the media. And they've scrutinized his footage as well. He's got hundreds of photographs, daytime shots of objects floating around or flying around in our skies. So it's just another way of capturing what's going on out there. Well, I tell you, uh, I speak to people all over the world and it sure seems like uh, the amount of activity uh, going on lately is just skyrocketing. It uh, is. It's phenomenal. That's true. I, I don't we know whether it's because more people are looking for them or if they're, you know, if truly more activity, but it seems like more is being reported. Uh, Celia, <laughs> let, let me ask you, did, did you have a uh, some type of experience yourself? Yeah. The most recent thing we will have to some degree, but the most recent thing um, this is really strange because we we meet at the art center in Campbelltown, and after it's over, a few of the committee that ran the meeting, which was myself, Lorraine, Kelly, uh, Darren, Mike and Mark, and then there was uh, Mike and Mark, who are a couple of members. We were standing around having a chat in the car park. And being a car park or a public facility, there's a street lamp here and a street lamp there and so on, but then it, it, it's well lit enough for safety, but there are gaps in between, including trees. And the guys are standing around having a chat on one side of the tree, and I'm standing over next to my car, the back of my car, near uh, one of the street lamps. One of the reasons even we don't, you know, talk and stare at the sky at the same time, but one of the reasons you might look up is you notice something unusual out of the ordinary. What I mean by that is out of ordinary things, a commercial airliner traveling south to south, uh, Mike and Mark, who are a couple of members. We were standing around having a chat in the car park. And being a car park or a public facility, there's a street lamp here and a street lamp there and so on. But then it, it, it's well lit enough for safety. but. There are gaps in between, including trees. And the guys who are standing around having a chat on one side of the tree, and I'm standing over next to my car, the back of my car, near uh, one of the street lamps. One of the reasons even we don't, you know, talk and stare at the sky at the same time, but one of the reasons you might look up is you notice something unusual out of the ordinary. What I mean by that is out of ordinary things, a commercial airliner traveling south to southwest, then a light aircraft traveling north to south and then turning. They give this optical illusion occasionally you think, ah, these, these guys are going to cross, but you know it's not true. One's flying further away from you at higher altitude and they almost obtain the same angle, so you know they're miles apart from each other. But it's just one of those curious things, and a bird flies past 
all the things that you would normally see, then what happened? Well, as we were watching the aircraft, and we would not have seen it unless we were watching the aircraft, um, Darren said, what's that? And we all look up, and there's this massive triangular shaped object. Uh, yeah, actually, we can give you a diagram later, oh, but it, it's delta. Oh, you, you've already, have you seen it? It's a kind of delta shape. Oh, so in other words, that's the picture of that. Yes, I saw yeah. it. Concave the rear of it. That's what it looked like. And, and like a, a biplane apparatus across, in, the front. across the front of the, it. I didn't see the front. The, 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 the explanation is that if you have the nose area, that there appeared to be some equipment hanging either side, right top and bottom. Uh, rather like biplane wings, wings would be on really there. Really strange. It was close enough to be able to see, um, like, round nobules around the outside of it, which we think that's probably the lights, but it didn't have its lights on. It and was totally black. Yes. Totally silent and just moved across the sky, blocking the stars as it moved across. That's how you could see it. So, That's so no, no possibility that this could be one of the drones that they always talk about, the military drones. No chance of, of that. It, but I mean, it a, it so didn't make any sounds. The clouds, and then they might, they might move up at an angle or down. Have you seen these? And do you know anything about them? Uh, they're obviously under intelligent control because a lot of his footage shows them um, flying in formation. Um, there, there's uh, quite a lot of trios and a lot of our sighting reports are trios of lights. When he first captures a trio, it looks like it might be attached to some kind of circular disc and then you see them just take off and uh, fly away in, in all directions, but sometimes they fly, up, fly off in a triangular formation. So, I don't know, we, uh, is, there, is there something to do with the IR filter uh, capturing things that we can't see with the naked eye because you can't see them with uh, just his, his normal camera. What he does is he He's up on his roof, he's got a good 360 degree view, so he's got a camera with an IR filter connected and he's got a camera without the filter, so he's showing um, the blue sky and the, through the IR filter it's kind of green and white. You can see birds fly past, you can yeah. see aircraft, but the IR filter uh, picks up these white orbs which are flying in our atmosphere we don't know what they are, but he's not the only one to be picking them up. Well, that's Actually, what we, I was going to ask you. Are there others uh, that are seeing these things down there? Oh, well, yeah, we tried it out. With, <laughs> we, we tried it ourselves. I said, okay, look, let, let's not get something for the equipment we've got. We matched the exact same equipment just to look at the uh, 940 or 850, like near or far IR filtering to try and replicate the circumstances and I could see the occasional satellite I could see the brightest star in the sky at that time and I could see some of this other stuff and as we said occasionally quite clearly make out birds with with an IR at, at extremely what what for a terrible creature at a high altitude uh, but you couldn't see it very well either with the unaided eye or with an optical device of any other kind because it was picking up a sun reflection spot so brightly that you could see it with the IR as a dot. But every now and then you could see the wing flap or whatever. But some of these other things, I, I, I figured I'd explain it away in a week or uh, a month by talking to a few people from the laboratories, etc. And here we are, I don't know what, a year later, and <laughs> it even doesn't turn out to be something spectacular. But, but for... I, he's, get, 
50. He's been doing that a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, uh, from what I've seen lately is he is capturing these white orbs that yep. kind of float near the clouds and then they'll might, they might move up at an angle or down. Have you seen these? And do you know anything about them? Uh, they're obviously under intelligent control because a lot of his footage shows them um, flying in formation. Um, there, there's quite a lot of trios and a lot of our sighting reports are trios of lights. When he first captures a trio, it looks like it might be attached to some kind of circular disc and then you see them just take off and uh, fly away in, in all directions. But sometimes they fly, up, fly off in a triangular formation. So I don't know. We, uh, is, there, is there something to do with the IR filter uh, capturing things that we can't see with the naked eye? Because you can't see them with a, just his, his normal camera, what he does is he, he's up on his roof, he's got a good 360 degree view, so he's got a camera with an IR filter connected and he's got a camera without the filter, so he's showing um, the blue sky and the, through the IR filter it's kind of green and white. You can see birds fly past, you can yeah. see aircraft, but the IR filter uh, picks up these white orbs which are flying in our atmosphere. We don't know what they are, but he's not the only one to be picking them up. Well, that's Actually, what we, I was going to ask you. Are there others uh, that are seeing these things down there? Oh, well, yeah, we tried it out. With, <laughs> we, we tried it ourselves. I said, okay, look, let, let's not get something for the equipment we've got. We matched the exact same equipment. Just to look at the uh, 940 or 850, like near or far IR filtering, to try and replicate the circumstances. And I could see the occasional satellite. I could see the brightest star in the sky at that time. And I could see some of this other stuff. And as we said, occasionally, quite clearly make out birds with, with an IR at, at extremely, what, what for a terrestrial creature at a high altitude. Uh, but you couldn't see it very well either with the unaided eye or with an optical device of any other kind because it was picking up a sun reflection spot so brightly that you could see it with the IR as a dot. 